Hello and welcome. This is Jason Ko, and I'll be walking through a CSS animation tutorial explaining the basics of transitions and transforms. I hope everyone is doing well. How's it going? All right, so before we begin, what I want to show you is that I created a index.html file which shows a basic three button as well as two images, some metadata in the head, as well as a link to the styles.css in this current folder. So looking at the index.html file, here you can see that what we have is a CSS button with green background color, a plus button, an X button, and a couple images. So, like I said before, this was all declared and written in the index.html file. So now, to begin with CSS animations, what we have to understand is something called CSS animation or transition. So, a thing to note about CSS transitions is that a CSS transition allows you to choose one CSS property or a set of CSS properties that you want to animate. So with all animations you have to declare what properties or a set of properties that you just want to animate. Now to determine whether a property can be animated there is a rule which states that if there is an identifiable halfway point that means that property can be animated. So for instance um, opacity is a CSS property that can be animated because it accepts a value between 0 and 1. Properties such as the display property cannot be animated because you cannot really say there is a halfway point between inline and none or block and none. So now with the transition property what I want to show you that in the CSS file right here the transition property allows you to declare certain properties that you want to be animated. So with this property, what I'm saying is that I want the background color, the border radius, and the border to be animated over a certain period of time. Now, the second thing and what I want to go over is something called the transition duration. The transition duration property states how long should the animation occur? So once again, it simply states how long should the animation simply occur. So a quick demo is if I state the transition duration to two seconds, that basically means that <coughs> as I hover over the CSS button right here, it will change the background, the border radius, and the border over a two second period. Now a quick thing about transitions is that transitions occur through user actions or through a state of change. What I mean by that is in a state of change there has to be a particular mutation in that element state meaning as you hover over it whether it's active whether it's been on focus as such. So now just looking here, as I highlight, with this CSS animation button and the button hover, this hover states that will create a state of change in this particular class, and that class belongs to this button element with the CSS name. So what's going to occur is that as I hover over the CSS animation button, the background color will change to sky blue, the border radius will be curved, and the transition will occur over two seconds. So looking over here, as I hover over the CSS, you can see that is being animated. So over a two second period, a border radius becomes allows it to give this oval shaped figure. The background color changes to light sky blue as dictated here. So oops. So another thing that I want to mention in this transition animation right here 
is something called the transition timing function. The transition timing function states allow it allows you to change the speed of the transition. It can speed up or it can slow down. And how this occurs is through an acceleration curve that occurs with a set of time intervals. And these set of time intervals and this acceleration curve that is created by the timing function on a particular element allows you to speed up or slow down a particular animation. So a thing about transition timing functions is that transition timing functions can accept position keywords or you, it can accept the values that can be used in a function known as the cubic Bezier function that allows you to control the speed of a particular animation. So as we go back here, what I declared right here is a transition timing function for this particular hover. So ease in out states that it will start slowly, speed up, and then slow back down. So if we go back <coughs> to our page right here and we hover over this button, you can see a smooth transition occurring. Before it was suddenly abrupt, but with this timing function, you can see that it's very smooth. Okay, so now another thing I want to note about the transition property is the transition delay property. The transition delay property allows you to determine when to start the animation. Once again, it allows you to determine when to start the animation. So with the transition delay button, we're going to explore two other buttons right here the plus button and the X button, which is given by the class CSS Animation Button 2 and CSS Animation Button 3. So by that, <clears throat> we have declared a <clears throat> delay function right here, as well as a timing function and a duration. <clears throat> so I want, <clears throat> so what, what I want to ex explain is that with the CSS animation button 2 we declared a left property to be transitioned. So what that means is since the buttons are positioned absolutely and I give it a, a value of 10% meaning it is to the 10% left from the from the browser window on the most left left hand corner. So that's why it's placed over here by default. So with this button, with the CSS animation button 2 on hover, which will create a state of change, the transition duration will occur over two seconds, meaning it will take the animation will occur for two seconds, will occur over a two second period. The timing function determines the speed, which states that the animation will occur suddenly, it will speed up very quickly, but then slow down. And the delay states that the animation will start after 0.5 seconds. So if we go back to the index.html and load it on the page, we can see that as we hover over this plus button, it will move to the right. And with this X button declared by CSS animation button 3, same thing. I'm declaring a transition property with the left property to be animated. And what I'm doing here is this with this duration, it'll occur over a two second period. The speed will be linear, meaning it will neither speed up or slow down. It'll be at constant speed. And the animation will start after 0.5 seconds. So if we take a look at this and we hover over the X button, you can see that it's being moved to the left. Brilliant. So another thing what I want to explore is transforms. Transforms and transitions are independent of each other. They do not depend on, on each other. Transitions can occur alone and transforms, transforms can occur, occur alone. But it is when they are combined together you can create powerful animations. Now with transforms, the property can accept transform functions and the four functions what I really want to explore is rotate, scale, skew, and translate. 
rotate function allows you to rotate a particular function or allows you I'm sorry allows you to rotate a particular element scale allows you to modify the size of an element skew allows you to change or distort the appearance of an element along the x-axis or y-axis and translate is similar to relative positioning where you're able to move an element to or move the element along the x-axis or the y-axis so let's see this in action so what I have right here is an image with the class name of love image which you can see right here is this image right here so with this love image what I'm doing is the same thing I'm declaring the transform property to be animated and this animation will occur over two seconds now the transform property if not declared on a state of change will occur immediately so it will be abrupt but when I declare a transform property on a state of change, it will be a much smoother transition. So what I'm declaring here is that with the transform property, this rotation function allows a particular element to be rotated 360 degrees or one complete cycle. So as I go back here and I hover over this image, you can see that it's being rotated 360 degrees. So once again, as I hover over it, it rotates 360 degrees and it rotates back. So now with the skew function, the skew, as mentioned before, can be allows an element's appearance to be distorted on the x-axis or y-axis. So with this particular value, this function accepts a degree value and it'll skew the element from its center 25 degrees. So what I mean by that is as I hover over this, it skews to the, the top left will be skewed towards the left and the bottom right is skewed towards the right. So it skews on along the x-axis. I can also skew it along the y-axis by changing it to skew y. And what that does is it gives you a more vertical skewing. So another thing what I want to note is that with the hover, you can also use a property called translate. And with the translate function, it will move a particular element along the x-axis. So as you can see here, and if I put a value here, which will be, say, 200 pixels, it will translate the particular element across the x-axis towards the right, as you can see here. Also, you can translate along the y-axis, which will push it upwards with a negative value uh, along a state of change, as you can see here. So these are all CSS animations that can be done through a state of change. Uh, another thing what I want to note is the scale function allows you to change the size of an element based on the particular value that you give it. So what I mean by that is if I change this to scale and I give it a particular value to be twice its size, as I hover over it, what that means is that this particular image will be increased by twice its size, as you can see here vertically and horizontally. All right, so this wraps up CSS animations, particularly with transitions and transformations, transforms, sorry. And I hope you really enjoy this tutorial. Thank you.